Welcome back to the college championship semifinals between Bay State College and Converse University. It is a 2-1 series now, Dimitri. We are here with only one win remaining for Bay State to go and clinch their tickets into the finals. Oh, it's so exciting, man. Just the fact that this series has been back and forth. You already saw it in the predictions earlier on in the day. Kind of a, a stacked desk towards Converse, but so far we've been seeing I think more Ooh. consistently a better performance from Bay State. And getting in to this champion select, the big standout. Wow. Is Ari has been taken off the table, but not Bajani's Gangplank. Yeah, I was gonna say, the fact that Gangplank made it through is is a little bit bizarre in my mind. This champion is absolutely ridiculous right now, especially in the top side. We have not been able to see it at all during this tournament. Thanks it has to been the fact permanently banned. It has every single time. And the fact that Bajani gets to pick it up is a worrying trend, considering it has been three out of three games he has performed up against Panther. Well, the problem here for Converse has been, what do you ban? Yeah, the Wukong's a problem. The Ari's a problem. You have to leave something open, and it seems the Gangplank is what they left, and then they grab themselves Ezreal and Viego. Yeah, um, I mean, this is a huge shakeup from Converse. No longer the Volley Bear. Where is the Volley Bear at this point, well, right? Well, it's also, is that Viego jungle? Is the Viego top? Exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah I, that's what I'm wondering, keeping it a little bit flexible for them. So now Bay State, what are they gonna go for? Instead trading the Ezreal for Kai'Sa, giving Sophus Sage some more playmaking potential on his own when they go for team fights. Converse though, they pick comfort. Oh, they slam baby. the Renekton for Panther. That is what we've been wanting to see this entire time is that Panther goes on to his comfort champion in Renekton, but it's into Gangplank. It's gonna be tough. And maybe if he gets some jungle assistance, maybe if Coach Chad walks into that top lane and graces him with some Viego gameplay, then we can see Bajani get taken down. Definitely is a little bit harder for, uh, for if Renekton can get a little bit of a lead in that level three. Well, I think what you wanna do is play, do exactly that. You have to, you gotta yes. put Bajani behind. He's been out of control in these games. Even last game, just on that Aatrox into Nar, the solo kill he's able to get, but now, we're turning our attention into the su support and into the mid lane since those have been left open and both Zoro Zoe and Zeref have been taken away from Serenon. Okay, and now with Oregon as well, what are we gonna see from both mid laners? Is this gonna be another Vex style matchup where they try to get rid of something from Bay State? Is Serenok going to opt for the Lissandra matchup? I think mm -hmm. there's a, a couple of things that Serenok could do here, depending on what's going to happen. Banning out the victor. I think you have to against Radar. That is one of the champions he's performed very well on in the past. So taking away one of the comfort champions from one of the uh, players on the side of Converse is necessary. Eyes on Converse for what they're going to be able to pick here. I think they should just slam support, give Radar a little bit more time to look at what his matchup That's is going to do. be up against Serenok. And again, talking about it, Rox getting the Nautilus, also a good takeaway from the Kai'Sa pair. And looking on the other side, it is Leona. Since now we have the Nautilus Leona left up and available for both sides, we've been waiting to see that. And Leona Kai'Sa, that is a pretty powerful and aggressive lane. We've seen a lot of the level one fights between both sides. You want level one power? Well, it's not gonna get much more than this between the two bot lanes. It's literally, we can go and we can start to fight uh, whenever we want to. And giving range, I think is really interesting uh, to someone like the Saranox Syndra here. Mm -hmm. So what does Converse look to play for uh, instead? You're asking me. I gotta ask you, cause it's Echo that Radar goes to. Wow. What? I mean, this is, an, this is a kickback yeah, coming out is. from Converse. It's been a while since we've seen Echo uh, pop Hulk. up in the middle. Hulk, this is make or break for Converse. Sure. It is a do or die. They lose this game. They are out of the Collegiate uh, Championship Series tournament. They are gone, done, and dusted. Get the top four, but that's it. Their miracle run is over. And they pick Echo. They pick Echo. They get Viego for Coach Jad. They're completely turning uh, everything upside down, trying to shake open the drawer, saying, what else do we have left to try and take down base state? Um, now, again, this is a matchup where I think Radar needs to be able to abuse early game, and we need to see some stronger laning coming out from him, and hopefully with Echo, he can do that. I'm also looking at Dragon Min to try to mm -hmm. abuse this. I mean, that is a good champion to kind of try to punish a lot of the engage potential on the side of Converse. Lee Sin for Dragonman. And being that it is 
Dragonman playing that Lee Sin. That makes it so much more exciting. He's done so well so far in past series and even in the last game on that Lee Sin. I think we've seen both junglers uh, have some passivity in the early game, and I want Dragonman to turn it up, show off a little bit on this Lee Sin. We saw it last game where he's just connecting cues after Q and just slamming mid lane alongside Saranok. But I'm curious, just looking at this, an Echo, a Renekton, the Ezreal and Nautilus Converse, they could go for skirmishes at level one across the map. It's gonna be tough. I'm looking for base state to try and get, kick it off. And for Converse, keep on fighting. <laughs> and we are here for game four. It is a do or die for Converse, but for the side of base state, they are one game away from booking a ticket into yeah. the finals and they get an early flash out of Serena. Okay, this is literally what you need to do every time you have the, uh, the Nautilus. Walk into mid lane, force a flash out of the enemy mid laner. Just try to punish him for walking a little too far up. And again, this helps out Radar in the laning phase. Those first co other couple of yep. levels are going to be tough if they want to try and find a and kill. And a perfect target for Coach Jad as well. Nice, easy one where it's not that much mobility. Level one, level two, you're not going to have things like Scatter of the Weak usually up. So you can punish that right out of the get-go. It'll be a bit. I think Coach Chad's going to probably just go for a full clear. He could look for something in mid lane, know, but... I don't know. I feel like here, we're just seeing Converse go, you know what? Screw it. We're just going for the fights everywhere. Flip it. Flip it level one, boys. Okay. And we see something a little bit different than what we've seen throughout the series already, where Sophus Age is actually helping out his jungler. Interesting. And Converse have a few different options. Since they didn't put a ward down in the bot lane, it looks like they're going to try and get some cheeky kills or do something here to see where the bot lane is. They have control of the wave first since they're here. They can just control this and make it really difficult, either hitting level two first or pulling it so that Sophus and Sword Blue don't have an easy time fighting. But spotting out Sophus and Sword Blue roaming down from the red buff and a bit of poke by Scary Jerry. Gives them a lot of knowledge on the location of Dragon Men so they can play appropriately. They can look to see if they want to fight. And, well, of course they want to fight level one. When do they not want it's to Converse. fight level one? Converse, this bot lane of Scary Jerry Rock's duo are so aggressive every game. And they win out on this trade because the Plasma proc doesn't land. The Ignite is gone from Sword Blue, so they can look for this yet again in a few seconds if they really want to. My worry here is, do they actually even hit level two on time? Well, they do, because look at that sword blue. Got an bag kicking on his head from Rock since it's a level two experience lead for the side of Converse. I'm I'm only asking because I think they may have been zoned off from a single melee, the first melee minion that died in that wave. I guess we'll check it out in a little bit once the, if we end up going back down there, but really good war coming out from Coach Chad. I do like it, spotting out where Dragon Min is. We kind of already knew just based off the fact that it was a leash at red buff. You had to know that Dragon Minute was going to play on the top side of the map, but I like this ward as well from Panther. You'll see it, but this crash is insane. Like, this is a massive wait. If Dragon Min can find this, Panther has no oh, TP. Here it is, Panther. He's getting dove. He's got the stun, but it's still first blood picked up by Dragon Min. And this matchup is just completely... It's done. It's it's done, so. Uh Dragon Min, fantastic job of finding this. Rox, if you land this hook, my guy, you... X flash. He's got Hex Flash. Does he do it? Saranok? Is he an investor? Da -dun, da -dun. It's Rocks, da not Jaws. Da -dun. Da -dun, da -dun. I don't think he's going to do it. No, he's chicken it out. Yeah, yep. All right. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Uh, well, was going to try and look for a play. They haven't made good on the early Flash that no, was gone. I say that. I'm going to wait. Sword Blue is going to push him out of this pit. And Saranok, for not having Flash level 1, is not going to see any kind of punishment in this early lane. I think a massive mistake from Converse, mm -hmm. and honestly, good play coming out from base state to stay safe. The fact they also get that kill top side, it's only the bot lane that seems to have any difficulty oh! on the side of base state rocks. What a god! Sophist just playing a little too cheeky. He's trying to dodge all these skill shots, and Rox just comes up, says, here's a predict. We're just going to take that one from you. So good play coming out from Converse, able to punish that. Golden experience is going to be missing. He gives time for Scary Jerry and them to find resets. Eventually do something a little bit more fun. But right now, if I'm Panther, you got to be super careful. You have a wave that's pushing away from you. You don't know where the enemy jungler is. Speaking of being careful, Radar not being that careful. He could dash over the wall, but the Sonic Wave was already on wow. top. Nice scatter of the week. Saranok is bowling around Radar this entire series. Ooh, look at Panther. He has no flash. He just used the Ignite as well. Bajani trying to follow him. 
Should be able and to Dragon Man's oh, no. Dragon Man's gonna come and find him. They're gonna try and get this kill. If he escapes, it's like decent only but this wave if you look at Bajani oh, he's just no it's, he's wave. gonna continue to lose more and more if he can execute it's whatever but Panther is so far behind at this okay. point yeah this is that top lane is over for the side of Converse it's back look at this truth. they gotta turn their attention from the top lane back down to the spot lane for anybody who just uh looked at that top wave and said oh I wonder what's happening there that is frozen until Bajani decides he no longer look wants the that wave there yeah though. he's doubling up on him at this point Panther is non-existent for the time being he did this versus MSU. They sh they definitely focused him topside, and it was one great flank around the blue buff that allowed for Converse to continue, uh, end up winning that game and send them into the top four. But it's gonna take a lot more from the rest of his team. Take a look at this replay. I mean, this just shows the fight that happened earlier. Oh, uh, okay. That for forced the execute. Oh my! That barrel. Bajani, that. I mean, that was an instant cleanse. Yeah, it was. With the barrel, oh, with the, the uh, orange. Gorgeous, yeah, he's ho and he is so okay in that lane now that he can bully around the crocodile for days to come. The mid lane, saw that radar attempted a play onto Saranok with looking for a little bit of gold because they gotta have more than just spot lane. Converse cannot always rely on Scary Jerry to bail them out completely. I think right now, uh, so Coach Chad, he has his camps coming up topside like in a few minutes, his bot side camps are available. He's gonna need to bail him out. Panther finally communicating with him, saying, hey. this wave is huge, you need to be here. Here we go, gets the stun on top of Vishani as well. Getting a lot of damage, but Cannon Barrage has been used. There's gonna be the barrel to use with some orange. Wait. Okay, where is Panther to help out? Well, I guess Coach Jed just says, I don't need you. He's a, he has to deal with that massive wave. Panther's like, good luck, brother. I cannot kill him. I cannot walk up on this. So they're going to be able to push this. Bajani could invest his teleport, but especially with Coach Chad there, maybe now that seeing that they're going to go for a recall, he's going to pick up this wave. And in the meantime, Bay State still controlling mid lane, still controlling bot lane. They're going to be able to pick up a dragon. Especially because Coach Jad had hung out from that top lane for so long. Might as well get something across the map. You always want to see that out of these teams answer and reciprocate in kind what has been done onto you there's a gank top lane good place for coach jad to get himself a kill so make sure you get a dragon to set up a, p a potential investment for the future exactly and so now there's two minutes coming up on the rift herald here what i want to see from coach jad is with both bot lanes coming back to lane specifically now leona having a little bit later of a reset they can take these camps look for coach jad to have level six on his viego maybe prep for a dive there especially now that gangplank ult is down for a few got some time to kill can wait it out get themselves that advantage if they have a fight before cannon barrage is up tps are not there for the side of base state either converts have a lot to play around now, I'm looking towards Coach Jad on this Viego. Finally oh, seeing some change oh, 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 from him. Not the Volibear, and he seems to be more proactive and willing to carry. I want everybody to just take a look at the mini-map. Look at where the supports are running. We're running straight to top lane. Oh, we yeah. want all of this Rift Herald, and specifically now with Coach Jad there, clear out these camps, maybe look for something on the Bajani, who has no summoner spells. And I'm willing to bet money that Scary Jerry tries to solo kill Sofa Sage in bot lane. It wouldn't be a scary Jerry game if it wasn't trying else. Exactly. But it seems that instead, Sophus is being very cautious and protective while in top lane. It is going to be the jump onto Rust, the flash away, but with an guy kicking. Your blue gets the credit. Okay, and right now, Bay State actually need to take this incredibly fast. You see Radar, he's pushing in mid lane. Ezreal is here. I they can either go can. for plates or they can try to look for a contest. Yeah, look at where Scary Jerry is. He will be here in rocks. Being only level four is able to respawn so quickly that they can contest the Rift Herald and might even be able to take it away from base state. Need to wait. It's a tentative fight right now. Bajani's looking to try and use this. They're going to turn on to oh, Panther. Panther is their target. It might be a sacrifice for the objective, but it's still being taken so slowly by the side of Converse. They will secure it. Oh. And now they go for the fight. Radar in the middle of it. And even with the resets coming in, looking to see if they get the stunt. They got it on the sword balloon. Heartbreaker piercing the hearts of Bay State. There we go. Double kill for Coach Jad. And, you know, we've been talking about comfort for his volley bear. I'm excited now that we have a Viego in his back pocket. That he can do something a little bit different.
That is a massive that's just find a little for bit Converse. different. He is playing far, far and away a new style than we're used to. Exactly. I mean, he ganked top lane. It ganked worked this time. Lane. He's playing aggressively, and then he has plays like this where it looked like it was dire. And the fact of the matter is, is Bay State were thinking this was going to be an odds number fight. But even without rocks here, that stun, that parallel convergence from he Radar just finds two of the key members kills off Saranok, they get the Rift Herald as well, so a lot of gold in their back pockets. But in the meantime, during all of this, Safa Sage picking up multiple plates in the bot lane. So this Kai'Sa is starting to kind of truck along in this game. Getting some gold somewhere, some answer for base date, but if you're looking at Converse, this is a great change of pace. It's no longer just the Scary Jerry show. They've got Coach Jan 3-0 on Viego as well. Radar, like you had called out, that parallel convergence, massive. He has been playing up his game in this series. It's every other game at this point, right? Like it was the Ari performance. We've I now got his the Echo. Was pretty good. Yeah, the Vex, he was able to find multiple different picks. He got a lot of gold there. But when you're this kind of carry, when you have this responsibility, you need to be able to carry through on it. Either, you know, going in for some kind of side lane play, going looking for dives opposite side. Okay, dredge line. I don't think you want to fully fight this. Even if you have Coach Jad, look where Saranok is. He'll rotate around. There's a reset. They got a rampage and a reset, but you've now picked up Leona. You had to use the Heartbreaker way. Flash is doubled up by Converse. Saranok on the hunt, and he just outplays with Radar's one here. simple button. Now Radar, parallel convergence. The stun not connecting, but a lot of damage will surely hit connect itself, and he can easily use that Chrono Break to get out of there. But Coach Jad taking low. Sophis. It's killer. It's six shot down. Sophis. Sage helps turn it around, but Radar at least takes him with them. Might have scatter. to get Where's the scatter of the week coming out? Dodging away from some of the dodgeballs. Dodges away from Aww. one, but it's the respawn sword blue that makes sure he is cut dead. I'm glad that the fights are lasting so long that the support who started off the play dead gets to respawn, walk back in, and help. Panther! Wait, Panther, no way. There it no is. No way. No way. No way. Ignite. The minions, the ignite is not enough. 20 HP, Bajani, throw those thumbs up emotes. Panther almost finds a solo kill there with his essence, or sorry, with his serrated Dirk. Good plays, but Bay State making better on him there as 3,000 gold the lead for at 12 minutes. 3,000 gold lead for Bay State. Maybe more like 2,500, kind of fluctuating between the two. Probably the lowest gold lead we've seen at 12 minutes this entire series. Yeah, Bay State had something similar in game one, and with dropping the Rift Tail, they just want access to this dragon. They want to get a few plates on the Scary Jerry, which is fine. We've seen it multiple games now to make it here to top four. And this and this dragon seems to be really poor, but look at Dragon Minkin's flank. They know he's here. They saw him on the sweeper. Ooh, true he shot gets out. One of three people as well, somehow dodging the Sonic Wave. Dragon Min. Got his teammates to back him up. The power of friendship might come in clutch, especially because Bajani's going to have that TP up, and Panther doesn't have a TP. There's always a potential 4v5 fight that you can commence as Bay State around this dragon. And it's going to be a little bit more even. There's no cannon barrage. Right now, Panther needs to just keep him in lane, stop the teleport. Coach uh, Chad. Who's going to get it? Fight he got it. Coach Chad, a huge parallel convergence on the other side. Scary Jerry's going to double kill. They're going to be able to get a reset on top. Sword Blue. It's Radar who gets the credit, and Converse University are back in this game. That gold lead has completely evaporated at this point as Converse just find three members of Bay State College. They pick up the dragon as well. An insane game coming out from their jungler. As now they're going to try and make this play. Radar, Radar, can you find them there? He's got a Chrono Break back if it, in case it's too much damage to handle. And he's got Panther on the other side, he's gone. but he doesn't have the ult available. It's just too much damage, though, to really be able to dodge <laughs> away from that Chrono Break. That was a perfectly calculated play by Radar. Very cheeky of him to just find that kill. Bajani just a little bit too far up. He has to know that they're either redeploying or going for this play. Good find from Radar. If you take a look at this replay, my eyes were on Jad, but for everybody else, this hook from Rox sets off his mid laner yet again so that Radar's parallel convergence two times in a row now has been game-changing for them.
it's gotten them back into the game and radar his gameplay has just stepped up in this series he went from a player that was getting bullied in game one in the lane phase game two struggling game three struggling here oh. he's not struggling but now it's gary jerry who's suffering instead softest sage the carry pants they got moved on to radar and scary jerry just getting solo killed that is the danger when you are playing this matchup against the kaisa if she finds one bit of angle on you she's going to be able to go in and punish so Bit of a bad, a bad news bears there, especially now that Sophus Sage again alone in bot lane, picking up plates. He might even get the full turret. Yeah, he has a good wave there. So, it's, as you called Dimitri, it is changing of the throne for both teams. Who is the carry? It is Converse now, not just relying on Scary Jerry. It is Radar and Coach Jad who have the helm of this game. Well, on the base state side. Sophus Sage is looking, even if he's two and three, he's got a lot of gold under his belt. He's got nearly a thousand that he lords over Scary Jerry. Yeah, I, what I'm, I'm really excited about here for the side of Converse is the fact that, I mean, they could look for for this play. There is a mid turret. They really need to be able to mark Kaisa if they can either stop Kaisa from getting into a fight or blow up the rest of her members, then. Viego just has such a fun time trying to get rid of this marksman. It's 15 and a half minutes into the game. That's a fine. Nice cleanse out of Scary Jerry. It looked like a good pick. He's still alive. He's still safe, but he's low and he is a target. They got one person out of the fight from Bay State. You can tell that both sides want this fight to commence, but they need to find the pick first. Oh, here we go. Sword Blue goes in. He goes in and he's got a lot of stuns on to go chat, but who followed up? Nobody was able to. Instead, Rocks it's dead. Rocks. The first casualty in the fight, the kick on to Coach Chad. Look at Chad, But Sophus is low and he's killed first. Coach Chad's got recess. Dragonman, but nice Saranoc. get of the week from Saranok. Yet again, performing the carry duty while Panther gets a solo kill on the other side. And he could rejoin in this fight. They're pinging that he is on the flank that Panther could be seeking to hunt down the remaining members of base state. It's two for two, but Sophus this goes down a shutdown available for coach Jad and the squad scary Jerry his marksman play okay Saranok is safe I know we were holding breath there saw the parallel convergence coming out from fog of war but soft sage going down there just means all of that goldie that we were talking about does tend to evaporate and we're now looking for someone like Saranok and Dragonman who did play that fight pretty well. And all in all, that ended up being a two for two fight because of the solo kill from Panther. It made it so that the side of Converse didn't lose any ground. The gold deficit that they have, while still being about a thousand, is nowhere near what it once was now, actually after they got the turret down to less than 500. Yeah, I was what I was worried about there for base state is the fact that Bajani didn't have eyes on Panther. He had dropped into Fog of War. So good, we'll get a, ta we'll get a chance to Look, take okay. a look at this. Bajani is just fighting while the rest of his team is there. Yeah. And he just can't join. He has no cannon barrage at this point. He's not able to do much. And then he just gets solo killed. So right here, no eyes on where he is. Ultimate oh. comes down. He gets the solo kill and it evens out the play for them. And now coming off of a redeploy, Converse will be able to get this Rift Herald. He expected to see Panther go down to the fight. Exactly. And he wasn't expecting the crocodile to be hanging out in the brush and sink his teeth into him. All this time, they got themselves a Rift Herald. Radar is now looking like he might be caught out by Sword Blue. Had to flash and dash. He's got the Chrono Break back if he wants to escape from Dodge. Got a lot of damage onto Dragonman Kim. And even with the Sonic Wave connecting, and shut down credit for Lee Sin. But it's Dragon, and what can they get for this? Looks, looks like Converse, they're gonna try and open up an inhibitor. Baj uh, Bajani's here, but I don't know if you really uh, want to walk into this. Scary Jerry's invested the arcane shift. I they want to look for it. They want him. I think they want to keep chasing. They've gotten the charge, and they've gotten the turret in this top lane. But what else can they get for this? They're gonna lose out on the dragon. Again, it what? is just cloud yeah, but it's, but it's a lot of gold in their back pocket that they've gotten. I wonder if they'll be able to even return to this lane, right? Because now this is a super long lane and with mid tier one still open and available for base state, it's super, I think it's incredibly tough for Panther to ever revisit this lane. And I don't think he will. We are now in the point oh, when we have oh. Converse looking for team fights. They can easily try to see if they can catch off guard members like Soft Sage by himself. The buffer there from Coach Chad. And look at the Prowlers claw renekton and chasing down the kill. Should be able to solve out while we have a fight in the mid lane. They're going to look to see if they can get a little bit more. But with one dead on the other side in the side lane, 
Based it, have to relent. Thank you to observers for showing it in the picture in picture. I wanted to show it off. Just if you take a look at the vision that's in this bot side, it is completely in favor of the side of, uh, Holy of Converse. And at that point, he's sitting in fog of war. Soft Sage just goes a little bit too far up, and Panther finally picks up a kill. And this could be, I think, the redemption game for Panther so far. I think this is, uh, no, I don't think, this is the closest game we've had of this best of five series between Converse University and Bay State College. We are nearly 20 minutes into the game, and we don't have a 5K gold lead for either team. Let's go. We're, we're getting it. It's getting even as we get further on into the series. I mean, honestly, impressive. Thank you. To, let, let's take a look at this replay before we get into anything else. Yeah, he's just in fog of war. Sophus Sage, good luck. He was thinking Prowling maybe they can win this. Flash as well out from him is but, an important CD. But the Prowler's Claw we was love Prowler's already Claw there. Also. So the Flash meant nothing oh. as we go back to live. All right, what? well. What? Office Sage just got a solo kill onto the Scary Jerry. Second game, second one of the game. Uh, and now this leads to this play oh, where they can no. move, shift right into top side. Panther does have a turret and he has no escape. That's payback. He's like, look, I'm getting back. My boys are here to back me up. I'm going to get my wow. kill, get my shutdown as well. It's and my two members dead. Yeah. They're going to start the Baron. They go right onto it because even if Panther respawns before they look take at Sword this, Blue's they flank, can though. easily work this fight with no TP. They had Sword Blue. He had an angle, but here comes the TPs in looking for the re-engage fight. Coach Jad's getting chased down. <laughs> he has the Heartbreaker if he wants to try to dive into the pit. He goes for it. The oh! steal! Coach Jad! He keeps them in the game, and they got the kill on to Bajani on the other side. And it, I mean, it's great for Bay State that they are able to find that kill, but a Baron being taken by Converse. It's gold in their back pocket and more time to continue to pressure some of these waves as the rest of Bay State look to reset. Scary Jerry was on his way after that last fight, but Coach Chad, G has stepped up in this game. Name change to Coach Chad, man. This is what starts off the play for Bay State. A passive proc from, uh, from the Kaisa means that they can start up this Baron. And let's see it. Sword Blue was marking him the whole time. Wow. The numbers game right there from Coach Jad. And on the side of that, Bajani walking into Fog of War gets found out by both Rocks and Radar. So fantastic find. Look at the gold graph for this game. Back and forth, which is what we were not expecting considering no. this, the way that the series has been playing out. But what a glow up from Coach Jad and Radar in yeah. this game. This looks like night and day from what we've seen even in the semifinals alone from the two players. Big breath for everybody. Base State, Converse, the game is not quite over. Obviously, it is neck and neck, 15 to 14. A little under 1,500 gold in favor of Converse. We still have a lot of League of Legends to play before oh, yeah. we are able to get anywhere near to close to the end of this game. Panther is doing really well for himself, but we need to keep our eyes on Saranok and Sophus Sage. Sophus Sage has had ups and downs so far just in this game alone. Finding right. solo kills, but also getting caught in a, a little bit unawares. But he has 2,000 gold over Scary Cherry. This is true. So despite the fact that it is Converse who have the gold lead themselves in this game, it is still a Scary Jerry normally the carry for the team who finds himself in the hole. And right here, they're going to try to utilize that bear, and they'll give up a top tier one to try and pick up they a bottom to lane tier two. two. It, yeah, and right here, I think this is a good spot for Bay State. Yes, you are getting a turret, you are trading this, but you have Cannon Barrage on the opposite side. And look at how much damage Bajani is doing to this turret. With the trial by fire, he is melting this. He just has to take a recall as he doesn't see where multiple members are. They could be recalling, they could be somewhere. Look at Radar, he's trying to find this kill. He is a hunting. He's got his radar off. He knows that Bajani's nearby, but he does not know exactly the position of the rest of base state. So he falls back instead looking to contest the dragon. Couple of options here for both teams. Looks like base state, they want to put themselves on sole point here. You look at the mid lane, okay. they're trying to push this out. They do still have the Baron buff. Seems like it will just be completely sacrificed by Converse. They don't even try to put up a fight. Instead, they're just pushing down hard through mid. Exactly. I think this is a, a pretty good trade here for Converse. It's another Cloud Drake for Bay State, but you're getting more and more map control, taking more of these turrets away from Bay State, taking away some of that safety that someone like Saranok on the Syndra really needs. And look at how dark the map is oh. for Bay State. 
Not something we're used to seeing out of this Boston Bay team. They've been dominating almost every single one of their games. And we went to three during UCI for the quarterfinals. And here again, Bay State getting pushed to the edge here, trying to find a win. They're still holding on. Again, Sophus H just finished three items. Bajani has just finished his collector. A lot of damage items coming in for this team. It's parallel convergence will spot out the red buff was taken by Sophus H. So Radar goes back to regroup with his team, reformulate a plan. Got some time, like you said, we can take a breath. We've got two minutes until the Baron will spawn. We've got four minutes until a potential soul. Bay State, it is still even. It is still close enough where they don't find themselves too far behind and they have a Gangplank who just completed his collector. Exactly. And all, uh, for me, what I need to see from the side of Bay State is Sword Blue marking Radar and Coach Jad. We saw it in the Baron fight. Sword Blue couldn't keep him locked down, and so it led to the Baron steal. If Sword Blue can get in front of Radar and stop him from threatening the back line, it allows for his carries to deal and dish out that damage so that Bay State can kind of tip it over the edge. Oh, he just got barely seen. Okay, yeah, there it is. So look at Bishani. He's, he's going to bait. Oh, he's baited in, but the damage in from Panther wow. takes him down with him. Goes for a one for one. They lose control of mid lane here. You see Coach Chad and the rest of the squad, they're going to move in into this blue buff pit. This could be a okay. fight. They know Coach will be here there. first. Everyone's locking him down, but he goes golden with a soft watch to benefit. Here's Saranok. He's on the other side trying to see if he can get the damage with the chaotic of the week, but they got enough damage on the seven stage. He uses the killer instinct. Look at how low Coach Chad is, but they have Radar getting out of there with the stun coming in from the side of Sword Blue. Double kill for Zophis Sage. Bacon more because they're chasing down Scary Jerry, dodging away from oh. the skill shots, poking at him as best he can, but all they have to do is wait it out. A little bit of poke comes in from Scary Jerry. They will barely hold on to their own lives. Good job from Sword Blue again. They're holding down the front line. Rox goes down. Radar gets blown up. And it means that this Viego cannot pop off in the way that we've been seeing him do so in this game. Bay State holding on valiantly, getting more kills. Again, closing up a little bit more of that gold lead. There's getting more gold, getting more items. Let's take a look at this replay. I mean, that's just Prowler Claw Jeff right there. The, the damage amp is just insane. It is nuts. I mean, sure, he falls, but taking out a Gangplank, the Cannon Barrage no longer being a tool, helps them a bit, but this is where things kind of get a little bit dicey. Yeah, Coach Chad, he's in stasis. He's not gonna be able to do damage. Saranok makes this play matter. As Scary Jerry's nowhere nearby, the rest of the team's going a little too far up. It means that Scary Jerry's not pumping damage. He's doing nothing here. And Radar, who was caught out, it was easy to choreograph how to pick him off afterwards. He knew where the Chrono Break was gonna go and that shutdown goal that was picked up on the other side. And now they are the ones who had lost all of the vision, can control it themselves. Base State have eyes completely on to Baron. And they melt this so fast with how fed Sophus Sage is, is at this point, right? Mm -hmm. You can also have Bajani end up moving up if he really wants to take a different path through the jungle. But instead, you see right now, Radar is pressuring this bottom lane. Bay State, they don't want to collapse. They do not want to lose control of mid. They want to try and pressure for this. And it is complete fog of war for Converse. They do not know where they are. So they can now move into the river, clear out all of their vision, and start to establish dominance in the area. Ebb and flow. The back and forth barren dance between both teams. Neither wanting to relent. For Bay State, this game could be their ticket into the finals for college championships. They're one step closer, so close to finding victory. And that pick onto Rocks might set them up with a flash. We'll keep it locked. Wow. But the Zenith play from Sword Blue keeps Sophus Sage godlike. And now they can for sure go for this Baron or at least look to threaten it. Scary Jerry Getting with no cleanse. cleanse. That Scatter of the Week is just Sniper at this point, right? Like it has extended range because of the... Uh, it's just insane at this point. Now. For Bay State, I would have liked for them to just go for the Baron. The Dragon is going to be non-consequential, and it will end up spawning the Elder Dragon, which is both a win condition and can be a loss condition if Converse are able to steal that. And it's a coin flip at that rate. And you can tell that Converse are more than comfortable letting the uh, Cloud Soul go into the hands of Bay State for that reason. They instead have their attention towards the top side. But they can't burst it down too quickly. They don't have the members in the right position to take Baron fast. I just think this is a mistake from Bay State. Yes, you got the, uh, the Cloud Soul, but do you really need all five members to do this dragon? I don't think so, personally. You can keep people in mid lane and has still have control of the Baron. 
with the resets coming in for base state you can spend some of the gold they've accrued like you said they have relented the control around the pit a lot of dark vision are inside of Baron Pit and outside. They've only got control inside of their own jungle. Yeah, they can't even walk into the Fog of War here. Base State have a nice line of vision going at least from the mid lane outlet going into this uh, river. The problem for Converse is they've had to take some resets. Base State are going to be coming back stronger with more items, with a little bit more in their inventory. Okay, and it means that... Ooh. Oh, Panther's been sitting here for a really long time and not able to get much off of it. So no. right now, they're just waiting. Base State should be able to uh, apply pressure. Now put dominance into this side of the map. And that's all we're waiting for. It's just Epic baiting flow. for Baron. Pull multiple people away. If they can get Radar's uh, teleport, they're more than happy with that. Uh-oh. Well, what about if you can get Panther Look at Saranok. Saranok, nice scatter of the week, the damage. He tries to get it in distance. There's the Prowlers. Wow! wow. To take down Saranok. Again, it is a trade of his life for someone else's. The Panther makes sure that Saranok, who's been crucial for these fights from base state, is out. And that's 40 seconds. Look at what ra where Radar is. He is continuing to farm, continuing to put pressure on this and this greatly crippled base state. Bear now. exactly They're, this stops base state from having control of the pit so panther yet again save your play puts this team in a really strong position you see already now they're going to enter through mid lane all through the vision teleport oh, coming out potentially and brush burn that's what they wanted to get out of here but now the time to fight coming in from the side of base state with a lot of damage on the rocks Legendary's off the of stage. Radar's nearby. Parallel convergence oh, gets him, but they exhaust. got shields to keep him alive. That exhaust was crucial. 25% on Coach the Baron. Chad. Coach Chad, can you be a hero again? He yes! can, of course he damn can. Stealing away the Baron with the Guardian's Angel to pull him back up by his britches. He will die, but they got the Baron. There is no missed smite. There is only Coach Chad. Converse get another stolen Elder objective. And they just get another two and a half minutes left in the game. They can continue to scale up. They can continue to pick up more items. And they can look to see if they can coin flip around Elder. Yeah. It gives them enough time to fight around that because we've seen these fights struggle for everyone besides Panther who can blow one person up consistently. This is what, we, what I was talking about earlier is if you have control of the Baron and not necessarily the Dragon, you can make sure that there's no Elder flip for this point. Really good mark, I think, coming out from the side of uh, Sword Blue, stopping Radar from being in this fight. But they they don't have vision of Coach Jad. No. It's this one small moment, 814. He lands the smite first. How does he get? How does he keep? I don't it? know. He keeps getting away with it. It's it's just like a, a sixth sense for him. He knows when to go for these smite steals. This wave top lane is huge, and with two and a half minutes before the Elder Dragon. Converse, as long as yeah, they use this Baron not. and no one gets absolutely blown up. Radar, he knows that Saranox there. He dives in. Chrono break back. Scatter misses. The scatter missing, but they already got the damage coming in from Vizani to be able to get a kill. Close. And they got a kill on the other side to Coach Jad, continuing a fight for B5. Looking to see if they can pick up rocks. They can. Soft Fist Sage is huge. Even with Dragon Men getting out of there, it's a triple kill for the side of Soft Fist Sage. Make it a quadra kill. And that's it. Base Stake, they can look to an end right here. If they can protect this minion wave, this turret should go down. Converse, get aced after getting the Baron, making all of Coach Chad's uh, pursuits completely null and void at this point. It looks like instead they're gonna try and open up this inhibitor. Dragon Min tanking this up, swap the turret aggro. Wave is coming in, 15 seconds. Rox is up first. Rox will be up first, so I don't think the entire game is just yet over. They will lose the bottom side inhibitor for the side of Converse, but they will have one more attempt at a fight. Man, it was so close. Two different fights that could have gone differently. Topside, Radar, almost finding a kill onto Bajani, gets bursted down. And Sophus Sage yet again makes a pick onto Coach Jad. Scary Jerry's not able to find it. And let's take a look at this replay. So what was happening on the other side of the map? Coach Jad just gets caught out there. It yeah. was a great pick by Swordboy. Where's the rest of his team? Like, we are in complete no man's land. Scary Jerry's coming from mid lane. Panther's about a mile out. Same thing with Rocks. I think there was a coach chat getting caught without uh, knowing exactly where the rest of base state were. And Soph is wanting to flash ward, getting his quadra kill. There's also initially a 4v3 Radar. fight in favor of Converse. The fact they lost that and honestly credit over to Sofa Sage and to Sword Blue. Look at that. 15 and 5 Kaisa. Yeah, I mean, this is the Kaisa that's going to carry the game, right? Like, 
He has full items. Exactly. Scary Jerry is trying to finish that off. Maybe if that Prey Seeker ends up landing, you have a potential kill onto Scary Jerry. You force out a Summoner spell or two. Over. Magical. We've got Dragon spawning in 30 seconds, and yeah. I think everything that's happened this game, everything that's culminated in this series comes down to this moment. Does Bay State go to finals, or does Converse take this Elder, win the team fight, and look to press on to a game five? Well, I was about to say, th there's so much that is falling on to this one objective. With 15 seconds now remaining, there's a reason we're counting it down. Bay State understand that too. They're pressuring back Converse. They don't even want a coin flip. They purely want to be able to control it without Coach Chad getting inside the pit. Nothing else matters from this series. The two Baron flips do not matter for Bay State if they get this objective or if they're able to find a pick before. If they're able to chunk out ra uh, radar or rocks, I think it's a solid win for them. You can see they're trying to play cautiously, getting control of the Dragon Pit slowly but surely. Then looking for the picks. Radar, he wanted a flank angle, but he's too far from He's done. Team, and they've already lost Rudd. This was a great play called by the side of Bay State with the support gone. Again, another miracle has got to be attempted by the side Panther's of Converse. Dead. But with Panther getting caught out like this, it might just be Doom and Gloom. Bay State, they've shipped out of Boston Bay, and they're about to get shipped into the finals, taking down every member of Converse. They are one step away from having themselves the championship. Oh man, Radar was trying to find something on a Bajani, but that's just it. They're gonna look to escort this bottom wave and while Radar tries to waste time. But it's over. Yeah, Bay State College, they're headed on to finals here with one solid pick onto Rox. Let's Bless. see what the mid support duo can do here. Minions finally starting to pour in. They've got a little bit of damage, but too late from the parallel convergence. That's the it. The game's over. Base State College, they booked their ticket to the finals of college championships. Fantastic job from them. Similar to their quarterfinals, that last game was on the rocks up against them. And finally, they pull it out. It comes onto one pick, finding rocks there and then chasing them out of the pit, out of mid lane. Bay State, it didn't matter. You lost two Barons, it got a little dicey. We still end up winning those games. 3-1 victory from the Boston Bay Bay State College team. Well played too. The first two games were one-sided from both sides. The third game a little bit closer and this game really delivering on the pretty much the intensity that we wanted from both sides. And the desk mentioned it. Game three was a game where we didn't really feel Jerry had a pop-off moment. Game four was definitely a lot quieter. And I think that's where we saw Sophus Sage finally step out and have his breakout moment. His Kaisa was so game influencing for this uh, for this last game. I mean, he was what 15-5 before the final picks up yep. and I think ended of the game 18 and 5. It was insane. He completely changed the terrain of this game. Maybe if it was a little more even we have a different game on our hands, but congratulations to Bay State and have fun versus USC boys. <laughs> well, Bay State reign supreme and claim their spot in tomorrow's grand Finals. While we celebrate, we're handing it over to the analyst desk and wrapping up our day. Thank you, Mad Magical and Dimitri Ock Battery Toledo. Welcome on back to the desk. I gotta say, even after all those Baron steals, it seems that like Coach Dad absolutely gave everything <laughs> he had. But uh, sadly, I think no one on the team is glad. In he only channeled the essence of Chad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> snaps all around. All right, all right. I like but I, that. I did appreciate the the Baron steals the yeah. the early lead as well that he got yeah. for himself in the team. I think the build could have been a little different. The way he could snowball himself uh, could have been better on the Viego. But mm -hmm. I really liked uh, how uh, Base State had to adapt to the draft that uh, mm -hmm. that Converse had and also the early game that they had, which was a lot more stable, and they eventually found some really good fights around neutral objectives. I am proud of the boys over at Base State. They made it all the way to the finals. They had to take down Converse. I don't think they were expecting to have to <laughs> play against Converse, honestly, considering all the upsets that they had to go through. Yeah. But they made it all the way to the finals in their first year. Oh, that's so exciting. On the other end of that, I specifically wanted to point out that Converse, we had said going into the series, it's not the Scary Jerry show. The other guys have to step up, I think, I yeah. after like game one. This series, the Renekton was able to get a significant number of solo kills yeah. in side lanes. 
trading one for one often and drawing base say otherwise. Uh, we dropped the Volibear pick, we got the Viego, which was way more important, and rocks on this Nautilus was insane. Everyone else stepped up, it just barely wasn't enough of them. Yeah, look at this hook coming up as well. The Nautilus is gonna kind of curve it over the wall mm -hmm. uh, right over here. You know, I just want to say, you guys sound down in the mud, and uh, I get it, you're huffing the copium after wow. all of your predicted converse to win. I am look the base state faithful, look. okay? You said 3 0. It wasn't a 3 0. We were all wrong. I was here. close. I was way closer than you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, My heart won today. I yeah. think that's, that's. I just wanted good games today, and I think without a shadow of a doubt, we had a lot of great moments today across both series. Yeah. This series in particular, you saw a lot of back and forth. I yeah. loved how much adaptation we got from both teams, both in draft and game style. I thought it was a great series, and again, hats off to Bay State. First year basically comp competing in SEAL. Yeah. as a partner conference, which normally doesn't give as much credit as the regionals. Mm -hmm. And they made it all the way to finals. I think that they might be the first regional team ever, or the first non-regional team ever do that. Don't fact check me on that at all, please. Sure. I won't. <laughs> but what if you're right, though? Then I'm, I mean, I'm right whether you check me or not. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, because nobody can truly know who's right or wrong if nobody ever fact checks anything. <laughs> I can say, I can say that, that it's six feet tall, and you would never know the answer. What if I said Scary Jerry is the best 80 carry? And you'll be the right check. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, yeah, but here's the thing, you didn't win, so that's kind oh, of like oh. empirical evidence right over there. But U Uzi never won either. <laughs> oh, that's a different conversation. <laughs> Scary Jerry is the Uzi of Sea Law. I Got agree. It. Well, it's not, it's not a proportion, but uh, to go ahead and bring it back to the game a little bit, like you were saying, and the day, Commerce showed a lot of different sides to themselves. You know, everybody had fantastic games, but Bay State. Yet again, they're the ones going to the finals. Bay State also, end of the day, right, they were very confident that they would be the ones rocking the entire lower end of this bracket. And they showed us today as well why. Yeah, and I think they had to show a lot in this series in order to yeah. actually advance, which makes the finals even more interesting because it feels like uh, Bay State in particular with their mid picks with what Saranok is doing mm -hmm. uh, and what Sofa Sage is like willing to pick as the picks go down in priority, as the draft goes down in priority. I think through that, they actually showed their hand to UST and it, it, it might make it a more interesting series or a more UST favorite For series sure. as a result. I know we've, we've been talking about bottom lane players a lot over the course of this week, but with numbers like we just saw there for Sofa Sage, mm -hmm. We can't not mention that that matchup against Shogo is going to be just so fun tomorrow. Oh, absolutely. And with our grand finals locked in, let's take one more look at the bracket to just understand what we are in for. It has been a long journey coming all the way here, but with US team based it now locked in here. Invert. Our best of five tomorrow is going to be sick. How, how sick is it that we got two animals in the finals? You know, we got the full dog. <laughs> I like how that's lion. your first point of analysis. Yeah, no, I love it. I think that's great that there's a little logo battle going on. I gotta on show as you well. the bracket of uh, team, like the bracket, but it was just by team, like logos. Logos, and, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. I remember that one. Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> Realistically, it is just a battle of a large cat and a strange dog. <laughs> <laughs> so, dogs win that matchup usually. It's pretty six, it's like mm. 60 40 favored for dogs. Oh, yeah. so. Okay, hold on. You were telling me that you thought an anteater would beat a bulldog the other day. <laughs> and you had you <laughs> You're yeah. not serious, bro. What, <laughs> what does an anteater <laughs> have <laughs> to beat a <laughs> bulldog? I had base three favorites. <laughs> One thing, what's up? <laughs> Jokes aside, uh, I think it is very telling or very, um, I don't know how to say it, but basic. Okay. I'm very happy that the last two teams, sure. I think, are the most well rounded. Okay. Mm. We went into this tournament talking about how strong these bot lanes are, how every team basically was focused on the bot lane, mm -hmm. bot lane this, bot lane that. And I know we're focused on Sophus, and I know that we're focused on Shogo, but it is great that the two teams, I think top jungle mid, top two, top three in their roles are the yeah. final teams in this tournament. It means we have 10 different players tomorrow that can really step up and kind of make their claim to that best team in Seattle. And to see what's going to happen tomorrow, you'll have to stay tuned because that's going to do it from us here today and on our behalf of myself, the casters, the entire broadcast crew. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow for 2022 League of Legends College Championship Finals! Woo. Presented by State Farm, of course. Good night! <laughs> Woo. Good night, State Farm. <laughs>